Welcome back to the Pig Trail Show. It is time for our Hog Hoops Report with Kevin McPherson. And first off, I want to start talking about this red-white game. You were there. You saw what this team had to offer. Uh, what did you notice in that game? Well, you know, starting off, uh, Tara, just looking at individual performances, I'm going to start with Justin Smith. We've heard all throughout uh, preseason camp and practice that he's been the most consistent guy both ends of the floor. And I thought that came to the forefront uh, Thursday night during the red-white game. Even 22 points. He only had to take 11 shots to get that production. And look, he was three from three, three, four, three from three. That's not really part of what his game has been in the past. Now, he improved every year at Indiana as a three-point shooter. But I thought taking the shots that were there, he took what the defense gave him, and he made him pay. So he was very efficient. He contributed six assists along with three rebounds. Thought he was solid at both ends of the floor. Then the freshman, Moses Moody, a lot's been made of Moses coming to Arkansas, really the, sort of the centerpiece of that ESPN number five ranked recruiting class for the Razorbacks. 21 points. He was 50% shooting from the field, but he also had six rebounds, four assists, a couple of steals, playing with the red team and on the same team as Justin Smith. I thought he was a standout, and I think he's one of those guys now when we start to project a little bit. It's too early to get over our skis. Can he be Arkansas's first one and done? A guy that has a solid freshman season and moves on to the NBA draft. He gave us a little bit of a glimpse in a red-white game that maybe, just maybe, he can be. And then guy, a guy like J.D. Note, 30 points we've heard for the last year. You know, he led the team with 30, had 24 in the second half with the red team. We heard in the last year that this guy may end up being one of the go-to guys on the score, you know, scoring the ball on the offensive end of the floor. And he, and he, he revealed that that very, very well may be his role on this team. I mean, he shot... Nine mm -hmm. of 18 mm -hmm. overall from three, but there was a stretch in that second half where he made four consecutive three-pointers in a span of a minute 38. You know, that starts to bring back, you know, memories, flashbacks of Mason Jones last year yeah. and the kind of outburst he would have. And then I look, you know, just a little bit further down, some guys that stood out, freshman guard K.K. Robinson, 18 points for the white team. Jalen Tate on the red team, a solid game, 11 points, eight assists. I thought the offense thrived with him distributing the basketball on that end of the floor. You look at Vance Jackson Jr., the senior transfer, solid game, 15 points, only took eight shots, so he was efficient, also had six rebounds. So several guys to me there that stood out in this game individually. So what would be the key takeaways, though, from that red-white game that you saw? Well, I think some of those takeaways are, first of all, you start to get an idea of maybe the rotation that Eric Mussman has in mind. You saw Justin Smith, Moses Moody, and Jalen Tate is guys that stay, started with the red team and did not switch over at any point in the game. I think those guys, probably he tipped his hand a little bit there. Probably guys you're going to see in the starting lineup to start the season. And then I think a guy like Desi Seals, I didn't mention him, 24 points, but he was pretty even playing with red and white, one half each. Good production from him. I think he's another guy. He started with the red team when the game started. I think he's a guy that probably be in that starting lineup and then the surprise might be the freshman Jalen Williams out of Fort Smith Northside. He had seven rebounds uh, in the red-white game. Didn't take a lot of shots, but I think he's a guy right now because Connor Vanover, the sophomore 7-3 center, has missed some practice time for various reasons. Jalen Williams, at the season started today, might be in that st starting lineup. I think both of those guys are going to split equal minutes or get a lot of run during the season at that five spot. Other takeaways for me is this team, Musselman, Eric Musselman, the head coach has talked about it, doesn't move so well, so well lateral laterally some lateral mobility issues and you when you're seeing 58 percent shooting by the red team 47 percent from three and then the white team in a blowout loss still shot 54 percent so this is a team defensively that's got some challenges now some people say well it's a red white game not a lot of defense last year there was defense played in the red white game it was sort of low scoring for these kind of events so not you can't mm -hmm. take away too much from it, but I do think Arkansas is going to have to get better on the defensive end when they open the season in just 10 days against Mississippi Valley State at Bud Walton Arena on November 25th. And lastly, I want to talk to you about two former uh, Arkansas Razorback players, Mason Jones and Isaiah Joe. It's a big week for them with the NBA draft coming up. What can you tell us about their preparation going into this? Well, both guys, when they came into the program two years ago, were not expected to be talked about as NBA draft picks this quickly, just after two seasons with the Razorbacks, but that's how it's played out. Isaiah Joe continues to move up draft boards, and most of the mock drafts now have him going early second round, even a few that still think he might sneak into the late first round. And Mason mm -hmm. Jones, what a story he's been, coming basically out of nowhere at a JUCO, and the season he had this past season, co-SEC player of the year, most mock drafts have him mid-second round, maybe late second round, but I think both of these guys 
have an opportunity to go to do better than some of these projections. We'll see. Uh, but I think Isaiah Joe probably where he's picked right now is probably about right. But I think Mason Jones might surprise some folks. He just had a really strong NBA combine workout. But I think both of them are going to play in the NBA. Now you go back just this century, you know, we're in 2020, just this century, only six Razorbacks, former Razorbacks have been drafted. So you could add two more potentially by Wednesday, uh, which would be significant for Arkansas because it'd be the first time, you know, in a, in a long time that Arkansas may have two players drafted into the same NBA draft class. So I think Razorback fans will be tuning in Wednesday, November 18th for the NBA draft to see where, what happens with Isaiah Joe and Mason Jones. Yeah, absolutely. I know we're going to be tuning in for that one. Kevin McPherson, thanks so much for your time and your insight. Really appreciate it as always. And we will be back with more on the Pig Trail Show right after the break.